<laughs> it's been so good in here. So we have. Oh. And we're going live in the Facebook group too. So you can wave to the people in the Facebook group. Hey. Hey guys. Wave, wave. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have Donovan with RSCH1 Residential and Commercial Inspections. I know your last name, Donovan, and we have this other guy here. He's, he's She's growing. the only person that does that last name because everybody else calls me by my last name, Harvey. 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 Oh, Harvey. 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 Okay. Harvey. 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 I'm three years in. I still know. Be Harvey. 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 You got the floor, Donovan. All right. All right. Um, good afternoon, all. My name, of course, Donovan Harvey with RSCH1 Inspections. Just quick on the name, that's both of my son's initials. Ah, I was, okay. I was curious. So I, I, named, I named my company after both of my sons. Mm -hmm. um, I have a third son, so I'll be changing the company name because he doesn't feel included. Mm -hmm. So the company is going through rebranding right now. Mm -hmm. But this is my trainee, Christopher Newby. He is a newbie. So he made it. You made it through <laughs> it. Oh, he, he got it. Like, mm -hmm. Right now, he could do an inspection by himself. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, he is, he's on point. Um, but I would tell people until he becomes comfortable to where he can say, Hey, it's time for me to go. Yeah, I'll keep him right next to me. Absolutely. You know, because at the end of the day, he, he wants to learn. Mm -hmm. It's all about learning. Right you know, <laughs> welcome funny. to an amazing industry, Chris. Yeah. A mm -hmm. um, little bit about my company. My company was started seven years ago this month. Um, when I graduated Champion School of Real Estate, I graduated 98% in one test and 100 in the other. Oh, wow. Let's just say I'm a test taker. You are dropping okay. the numbers on them. You, um, you know, so I, I went out there and I did it. And the reason I went into the industry is because I had bought a home several years earlier and my home was back to salt. Mm. Wow. My home was back to didn't speak to me. I sent out text messages and emails. He did not reply. And when he did reply, he replied to the realtor and said, I did my job. I got paid. What does he want? Oh, wow. wow. At that very moment, I went, if I ever bought a house again, I'm going to be my inspector. Mm -hmm. You're going to do it yourself. Because huh? I, I can't deal with these people. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the joke. The guy who did my inspection mm -hmm. actually took me out and helped train me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no joke. He yeah. took me out. He helped train me because I needed the knowledge. Everybody, mm -hmm. you you don't get in this industry of jumping in and run and go, I could do an inspection. Right. Mm -hmm. You need someone who's going to go out and you see what they did right, what they did wrong. And you say, how could I change this for the better? And make it mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's when I realized that anyone can do a home inspection. Not everybody can offer great home customer service. Mm -hmm. right? So I started selling customer service. Okay, my clients can call me seven days a week. The only time I don't answer my phone is when I'm asleep. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the honest to God truth. I I will work seven days a week if that's what you need. If you call me at one o'clock in the afternoon and I'm in my second inspection, say Donovan, I need you now. Deal. Let's go. I got a three thirty. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Where you need me to go? Where do you need me to be? Because I'm going to go to you. Okay, that's 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 my model. I, I honestly believe that you need a good business partner, and that's what I am. Okay, I'm a true reflection of realtors. Okay, if you offer great customer service, you should expect for every vendor you put out there. Yeah. They represent what you represent, and they bring that same level of professionalism and integrity mm -hmm. that you bring. Okay. Just to let you know, I fire about one realtor a month. <laughs> I have no lie, seriously. I've been doing good years, then. I, I have literally mind. told at least one realtor a month, you are not allowed to call me or send a customer to me again. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when you call my phone and you ask me to omit something of my inspection report oh, so that something, so that you could close a deal, mm. I look at you and go, you're no longer working for your client, you're working for yourself. Mm, yeah. And at that point, I have to step back from it. And by the way, I'm going to call your client. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I've been asked yeah. to do this. I need to know because if the client asks me to do it, I'm fine with it. Here's what I need for you to do. I need for you to send me an email stating that you want me to remove this from your inspection report. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take that email and I'm going to put it in the inspection report and resend it to you. <laughs> because if there's one thing I have is the inspection report. I've never lost an inspection report yet. Mm. I have every copy that's ever been done. My software home gauge home gauge saves and saves and stores every report that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just so you know, the client doesn't pay. I can also take my report back from them. Oh, really? Yeah. Can you send my link? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have a link with a password, but I can go into that link and I pull it away from you. Mm -hmm. You can't print it until you pay me. 
<laughs> that's when I open it up to print. Wow. Well, it's a product. Okay, because no, seriously, I have about four or five thousand also doing reports right now that have not been paid. Really? Oh yeah, people, people, oh I'm done. I don't want to buy the house, I'm not gonna pay you. Wow, okay. that's crazy. I thought you got that chick right up there. Yeah. There. Like that's that's here's the chick. thing. It's not I stress this and I cannot stress this enough. It's not always about the money. Okay. I will give a report away in a heartbeat. I've given reports to people I look at and I go, I know you can't afford this report. <laughs> I'm good. Don't feel no way about it. Wow. Keep the money. Because at the end of the day, it can't always be about money. Right. It has to be about you, the client. Okay. And so with that, you, you kind of look at your clients and you, you have to learn them. Now, here's the thing. As an inspector, we spend the least amount of time with our clients, with your clients. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I walk away knowing more about your clients than you'll ever know. Mm -hmm. They tell me everything. They tell me if they love you, mm -hmm. if they like you, if they dislike you, if they wish they never used you. <laughs> yeah, I know about the appraisal and how much they're paying and why they don't think they should pay that much. I know about the lender. And I will defend you in a heartbeat if you are right. Yeah. I tell them right off the bat, this realtor is taking you to show you 20 different homes. Let's be real. Burning gas, time. You're not paying them. Do not believe that they owe you something. Stop. Okay, somebody else is paying them to work for you. Yep. Trust the process. Mm -hmm. Just trust it. That's what the process is there for. Hence the reason why you hire a realtor, an appraiser, and an inspector, because we're there to guide you through the process. Mm -hmm. And that process is key because we all have rules, guidelines, and regulations that we go by to provide the best product. Okay, and so that's where we're at. Um, so that's me, that's my company. My company follow those rules. I don't care by any means. I will tell a client on in a heartbeat on the phone. I don't think I'm that inspector for you. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay, that's that's just me. I, I I I can't be everybody else. Everybody's inspector. I need for you to want me to be your inspector. Okay, we have got to click on the phone. <clears throat> Once we start talking, and he heard me. He, I get on the phone, talk to a client for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I'll stop in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. You need my undivided attention, let me give it to you. Because when you walk away, I need for you to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. you know, yesterday, was talking to a client. She's doing a new bill. She wants her breaker box inside the garage and not outside. Mm -hmm. She said, hey, I'm going to wait until I close on this house and I'm going to pay an electrician to move it. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, bad move. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to pay the builder to mm -hmm. move it. Because everything is open, the electrician could move. Mm -hmm. I said, because when an electrician is going to charge you to move it to the garage, we'll be an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. Question, why you wanted to move? But I don't want nobody to go and trip my breakers and turn off my security. Mm -hmm. ID channel. <laughs> Bad move. <laughs> nobody goes. I said, well, you can put a padlock on it. Yes, I can, but I really don't want to. <laughs> I'm on the garage. <laughs> the builder didn't even explain to this one why her water heater was in the attic. And her greatest fear was that it was going to leak and leak water all over her ceiling. Yeah. Well, nobody told her it has a drain pan with a drain line on it. No lie, the builder did not say that to her. When I told her, she said, I feel a lot better now that you said that to me. <laughs> so you kind of have to go along with it. You're not, look, clients are great. I love them all. Okay. But, you know, you have those one or two that you give the money back and you go, here, take the money, give back my report, and let's keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But, anyways, let's go to some pictures. I want, I sorry, do it. I Lisa want to got second, a I want to second that on your, your customer service because Latanya had a client that actually paid him to do an inspection. He was very thorough in the inspection, and we ended up not going with that particular house. So, that particular client went around us and found another inspector, and um, we weren't confident in that inspection report. So me talking to Donovan, of course, he knew that they were still looking and I called him and told him, and he said, just, just send me the report, just send me the report or send me, send me the client. I'll still give them a discount. I'll go out there and inspect. I want to make sure that they get a proper inspection done. Wow. Look, at, and look, at the end of the day, once again, it's all about customer service. Yeah. Okay. 50% of my clients actually come from clients. Mm. My clients refer me all the time. I have one client that sent me just over 20 clients already. Mm. If you buy a house, use him. <laughs> you know, and for me, I take that as that's 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 my pride. I look like wow, yep. you referred, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to show you guys some pictures, and then we'll talk about these pictures. And after we're done, we can talk about questions. Okay, so they're gonna be in my newbie. I love this picture. It's actually on, 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 on. I'm coming. 
I'll go man, food comma toast. That's okay. That's what good food's supposed to do. Lock you in. All right, boom. There okay. So right here. If you look up at the top, you'll see the attic stairs. Well, as one some point they had it screwed in, but when we were coming to do the inspection, they unscrewed it. You notice how it doesn't close? Mm -hmm. All right. Two weeks ago in Houston, this stairs was actually in the garage. Uh, father saved his wife, and when he went back in to pull his daughter out, both of them were in wheelchairs. Um, they both they both passed, and both of them almost died. Mm -hmm. That's because this stairs was not properly closed. And mm -hmm. what happened was the fire jumped from the home into the attic and burnt over the attic, and everything fell through the attic. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we talk, when you guys hear about fire separation. There's certain things in an inspection report that is never supposed to be negotiable. Anything that's safety. Safety includes fire. When you, when you see the word fire separation, it's clearly written, fire separation has been diminished, done. Look at that one item and go, we need this repaired before closing. Mm. Or if you don't have it repaired before closing, right after closing, you need to have somebody come in and address it. Because here's the thing what clients do. Use it and negotiate. Take all the money you can get off. Yeah. Fantastic. Now here's what happens. They move in the home, they don't fix anything. Mm -hmm. And you know who they call a year later? Mm -hmm. Donovan, my AC ain't working. Give me a second, let me pull up your report. Did you have the thing serviced? Mm -hmm. Well, no, um, I decided I was gonna have it. Did you have it serviced? Mm -hmm. No, uh, you, thank you and you have a good day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're done. Like, I'm not gonna have a conversation with you about a $7,000 AC unit on your home that you were too cheap to go back and use to report to have the work done. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients all the time, an inspection report is a detailed form that's full of information for you to use to get the house to where you need it. Nobody's gonna ever fix everything on home. Let's all be real. Mm -hmm. So let's be like, look, pick three, four items and let's move on. Mm -hmm. It's still your problem to fix the rest of it. Okay, so this one right here, Client didn't buy this house, of course. This house here was 2020 20 B. I had 2020 A. This was 20 B. I had two homes this year that should have never been on the market. Next picture, sir. Mm -hmm. You should have took pictures of that one time you had. You're going to see that it was sliding from or under itself. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. I think if you hold it, I keep it right there. All right. We could do it, then we could just use it with arrow over here to move it. But this right here, these folks that bought this home five years prior did not have an inspected. And the entire panel box had come off fire. Mm. They, they didn't realize why they couldn't use the AC unit, why several receptacles and switches in the home wasn't working anymore, because the entire panel was broken. So I'll give you an example. It's a 30 m breaker, 30 m breaker. But if you actually look at the wires on the 30 m breaker, they're the same size as on the 20 m breaker. Hmm. So what they did was they used 12 gauge wires on a 30 m breaker. And what happened was the 30 m breaker was too small anyways. So the appliance was drawing more current than needed and it caused the panel to fire. Oh, wow. That's a common issue when clients, well, people, um, their appliances are burning out fast, even in new builds. Yeah, so right here, what happened in this particular home, um, I had to call the sellers back and have each of them pack a bag and ask them to vacate the home. Yeah. They were not allowed to even, well, this wasn't even the worst part. The roof was, the roof was caving in and they didn't know it. Ooh, wow. The foundation was split wide open. There was nothing on the zoom that was right. Wow. So now they're in litigation with their sellers because yeah. nothing was done right. Ooh. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this right here, this had but called a fire one more time. Bought, you, you came after they bought the home. Mm -hmm. Because they never, they didn't get the inspection. Oh, this is five years later. Wow. They were selling it. <laughs> wow. Or needless to say, oh no, it's not being sold. Mm -hmm. um, but look, this is just one of the few simple things. If you don't have a panel that's wired correctly, I think since this year we've probably read into three or four, where you've had smaller wires on larger gauge on panels. Just found it yesterday, at a brand new home. Hmm. They had a 30 m breaker on a 10 gauge, no, on a 12 gauge wire. And on the other side, you had a 30 m breaker on an eight gauge wire, which was correct. Okay, so it doesn't matter new, old, in between. If a builder sucks, they suck. Okay, and not, not the builder, the electrician that they're using. You know, they put their names on it. They say this is our home, but in all retrospect, it really isn't. You know, so next picture, sir. Absolutely. Boom. Ah, 
Mm -hmm. This right here, this is the greatest issue that I have with new bills today. So this one here, warranty inspection, right here we have, this is a fresh air intake. So on the new AC systems, what they're doing is they're creating a fresh air intake on the system. That fresh air intake has this 12 by 12 filter. The builder never tells the client that it has it. Mm -hmm. So now we have to educate the client and say, hey, I'm gonna take a picture and tell you this thing has it. Well, on this particular one, two years, pairing on, went in for the warranty inspection and had never been replaced. The AC unit was covered in mold. Hmm. Okay, the plenum, the, the supply plenum was covered in rust and the builder couldn't figure it out. He said, I don't know why this is happening, blah, blah, blah. I said, let's go up in your attic. I went up in your attic and I showed him it. He said, but I told them they're supposed to change that. I said, who's they? Right. He said, the client. I said, it's funny enough that you could figure out what was wrong with the unit until I brought you <laughs> upstairs and showed it to you. Yeah. And now you're saying you told them. I said, come on, let's talk about it. He was the client ended up with a brand new AC unit. Wow. Okay. That's just two because years that, the AC that one filter there was not replaced. So what this here does is how old was that house? Two years. Wow. Two years. What happens is this here, it, it sucks in fresh air and it takes it to the unit and it allows fresh air to come into the home instead of always just circulating the same air that's inside the home. And that's what the new units are doing, which is great. Okay, it helps the unit to breathe better. It helps your home to feel fresher, ears are better. Mm -hmm. If this isn't replaced, you end up with all sorts of issues. Mm -hmm. Next question, next picture. Sir. <clears throat> <sighs> Anything that was built before 1982, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, galvanized plumbing. If it's built before 1982, more than likely it's galvanized plumbing and it needs to be replumbed. So when writing a contract on homes that were built before 1982, the first question you should ask is, before you put a contract, was the plumbing replaced? Mm -hmm. And they say, I don't know, stick $10,000 in your head. Use that number and okay. go, are they going to reduce this home by $10,000? Because mm -hmm. roughly it's going to drop between seven to 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have it redone. Okay, this one right here, it leaked immediately after I left. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wrote it in the report, I said, this one will leak soon call up the realtor i said that one's going to leak within the next week they went to the house two days later it was flooded leaked okay once again these are things that pay attention to it you know and the more information you know the better you can guide your clients the better you can guide your clients right the less work it takes and buying a home okay so if you know a home was built before 1982 you go look here i think this home has galvanized plumbing let me ask the questions if the plumbing hasn't been replaced, look, we might want to steer away because you're probably going to waste money on an inspection and on that option fee. You know, so just be mindful of that, okay? Next picture, sir. So this one here, new bill. In fact, I actually took this picture yesterday. Okay, right here. Have you guys ever seen a report, not you, with CSST gas line? Have you ever seen that in the report before? Anyone? CSST gas line. Okay, if you haven't raised your hand, then 90% of the times you haven't. Oh, it's estimated that over a million homes in the state of Texas, the gas line is not bonded. Okay. Ooh. Now, here's the problem with bonding a gas line. Because the line isn't bonded, you avoided the warranty on both water heaters, you avoided the warranty on your AC system, and any other component in the home that's gas. Because if you read their manual, the manual states that Gas line has to be bonded, okay? Now, what the builder does is the builder will go outside. If you go and look at the main gas line coming in, it actually is bonded. The problem with it is that plumbing and electrical say two different things. So the plumbing part of it says, the plumbing side of the code, and I'll quote code on this, states that because one gas line is bonded, they're all bonded. The electrician code comes in and states, because each component has its own electrical discharge, this line here has to be bonded. Because what happens is, let's say we have a surge of current or an arc of current, what that current will do is it'll find the least path of resistance. So instead of going backwards, it'll come forward. You see that line right there? It will burst that line. Now all of a sudden you have gas inside of your home. No line, it actually happens happens all the time. So you write it up and you say, hey, we've got to bound it. Now I get to the point, I actually drop the code in. 
Wrong. Here's the code. Done. I'm gonna deal with the electrical side of this and not the plumbing side. Of it. Because if I go with the plumbing, you're right. But it's wrong because of the electrical side and not the plumbing side. Because now you have a plumbing and electrician arguing who's supposed to do it. Because the plumber says, well, it's electrical, let the electrician do it. The electrician says, no, I didn't install that line. It's the plumber. You do it. I walk in and go, my client don't care which one of y'all do it. We just want it done. And guys, let me tell you I will talk crazy to them. I don't care. I'll tell the builder all day, you're stupid. I don't care. It's my client's money you want. And at the end of the day, you've got to respect that process. Okay? Do what they want. That's what that's all Here. Builders, some builders, and what's funny is the lower price builders are coming around to this faster mm -hmm. than the high price builders are, are different price points. So right here, we have the exterior here in the lead see the roof. So when it rains, where does the water drain to? Oh, right. oh my gosh. Okay. So the builder says, the unit was designed to be rained on. And I go, you're right. The unit was not designed to be drained on. <laughs> this taxes. We know when it rains, it rains. So all that water collects on the roof and it drains. And it comes straight down. And all of a sudden you walk outside and you're like, why does my AC unit sound so hard? Because the fan is now not balanced. The unit is no longer working right, and the builder's gone by their business. Mm -hmm. A year problem. But what we do is we throw the drone up in the air, we take pictures like this, and we'll, you'll see a draw a line with an arrow coming straight down saying, hey, look, this is why we want it. Most builders will come back around and go, yeah, for $60, we're not going to argue with you. We'll just go buy it and put it on. I think you had somebody do that, and then you had them do the, the drains, the whole, the whole sides on both sides yeah. of it because it wasn't up to code, too, or what you were telling them. But like, and you, you had to go back and do that, too. Sometimes a lot of builders, and I don't understand why, and I catch them at the beginning, I go, my client don't want y'all to put gutters at the front of the house. But we do. My clients want y'all to put gutters at the back and the side of the house. Because at the front of the house, the wood is just going to drain out. <laughs> the side and the back, the house is blocking it. So, you know, where do you want your guns? I want them in the back and the side. Make the water go that way. Builders just do it for aesthetics. They'd be like, oh, it's pretty. People think your house is the other side, really don't. Okay. Next picture, sir. Mm -hmm. Man, what is right right here? Yeah. So, you notice that you see the pink insulation? Mm -hmm. What they did was they threw a couple of bags up in it and then mixed it together to make you seem as though they had put in new insulation. And then they forgot to miss, they missed some parts. Now this right here is the biggest issue. Okay, this is a vent. The dryer, right? No, it's actually a bathroom. And, oh. and they all look the same. They all use the same type of okay. tubing. But what they tried to do was vent it out right here. Wrong, it has to be vented through the roof outside. Okay, they tried to blow it out here. And no lie, that's what blew away the insulation right here. <laughs> actually went to turn the fan on because I wanted to see it and it was moving. And it was just pushing the insulation. Oh, it was pushing it, pushing it. Yeah. Right? Now, the homeowner didn't know, and I actually believed them, because the plumber did it. <laughs> we went up there and we did it. They did it wrong. Guess who you're not going to call back to fix it? The plumber. <laughs> well, was he licensed? Was he referred by a friend, or did you look him up? And don't go on Angie's list, because you got to pay to be on there. <laughs> so they're not even reputable anymore. Okay, but that's 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 just the truth on this one. People, the things you find and you have to explain to the buyer, and God forbid, no like the sellers calling me now and I explain I say I can't speak to you, I don't work for you. You you're taking it personally, you're trying to sell a house and you're trying to believe it's a home. It ain't it's a house. <laughs> Think about your house as you're trying to get rid of your ex-boyfriend. You don't look at him as a boyfriend no more. You look at him as an ex. You're trying to figure out how you can get rid of him. That's the house. That's your ex. You're trying to get rid of. Figure it out. Just don't be emotionally attached because what I'm doing personal. Sure. Okay. So next one, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This house here was five years old. I think it's go to the next one. There's another picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Here. So what happened was they replaced the roof. And they finally put the rake flashing on because the home never had rake flashing. But because it didn't have rake flashing, the water drained. It went back this way and it came straight down mm. and it caused water damage. Now, you think that was the only problem? 
when I raised the shingles, it went up about two feet. The entire deck was damaged by water. Wow. Once you see this, you kind of have to go like write it up and say, hey, look, you can't only really look at the facial board anymore. You have to look at the soffit board. And when you look at the soffit board, if there's water, then you have to look at the roof decking because mm -hmm. the water couldn't go from here through there to come down. Mm -hmm. It had to come straight down. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it creates issues for you. And look, I'm going to lie to you guys. My reports are extensive. They're very detailed. I don't pick what's right and what's wrong. It's there for the client to pick. I will walk them through everything. I'll, have, I'll walk you through it if that's what you need. It doesn't bother me none. But at the end of the day, when the client signs a title and owns that home, both of us got to walk away going, we've done our best. Mm -hmm. They've got to be, we've got to be comfortable and confident in knowing what we've done for that client. Okay. I begged the client yesterday to not buy a house. <laughs> begged her. I told her, I said, I'll do your next inspection for free if you don't buy that house. Ooh, wow. She was like, is it that bad? So, lady, your realtor told you to buy the house. <laughs> this is your realtor telling you to not buy a house. And you calling me trying to figure out a way around this to buy it. Wow. And I'm telling you, don't. What was that bad? Wow. Okay. Man, so, your realtor tell you to buy the house. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right, you let it go. You got to let that go. Next one, sir. <laughs> mm. This is the area that nobody ever sees. The chimney cap. That's why I love drones. Because wow. no roof is even going to climb up there. Then they'll say, look, you have somebody look at it. This particular one I enjoyed because it was leaking right there. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so it was leaking, and how I know it was leaking, it drained down here, it went, and I looked in the front of the fireplace, the heart. I looked, and there was water damage on the floor. And I went, damn, where the water's coming from? There's none here, there's none there. Fireplace. So I took my drone, I went straight outside and said, let's take a look. <laughs> Leak. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So the problem with it is that now you have to decide, are you going to fix this and fix everything on the inside? Or are you actually going to take it off? These people bought this house, they took it off and they put a metal siding chimney. It was cheaper, it was easier. Mm. It was way smaller. They'll never have that water leak again. Mm. Okay. Next one, sir. Mm -hmm. Ah, the ridge. They have not realized that their shingles have flown off the ridge of the roof. I realized it because I went in the attic and all the light was coming through there. Oh, no. You walked up and you went, that's a lot of light. Walk back outside, you throw the drone in the air. You say, hey, y'all realize, y'all, needless to say, the entire roof needed to be replaced. It didn't scare the clients because the sellers had insurance. Mm -hmm. The insurance paid for it. They just came up with the deductible. Now, here's the beauty of it. If you actually catch up the sellers, you can actually say to them off the bat, before I send you this report, can you call up your insurance company and change your deductible, please? <laughs> call them up That's and say, hey, I want to lower my deductible. What is it going to cost? And then you go to them a week later and say, now could y'all please come look at my roof? <laughs> because it then costs you less money. Mm -hmm. And now our clients got a brand new roof. They're out of less money. Everybody's happy. Because <laughs> somebody declined that one time. I was like, why would you decline to get this done? if it's Because it's super. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But no, seriously, right? There's tricks to the trade. No lying, insurance broker actually told me that. Have them call, lower the deductible, wait a week, call us back, come look at the roof. All the paperwork should have went through. You know your new deductible. So you go from five thousand to twenty five hundred, thirty five hundred, you save some money. Well, that's pretty smart. Mm -hmm. Next one, sir. Oh. This was the other part of that roof. Yeah, so what, what a roof actually went up there and actually tied in new shingles with old shingles. It actually charges poor lady a lot of money. Mm. No, seriously. I think she said she came up just over $7,000 and he did a third of the work. <laughs> That's okay. But he only fixed it where they could see it. Wow. Hey, I'll just tell you what's wrong. You figure out who did the work for you. Next one. So can anybody tell me what would happen here? What would be the issue? The trees on the roof. The termites. That is your first one, to be honest with you. That's it, yeah. But these, this tree right here is going to tear this roof up. Mm -hmm. Every shingle from right here to here 
whether they like it or not, it's gonna have to be replaced. So this tree does several things. One, it's sitting too close to your home, so it automatically has conducive conditions for termites, okay? The second one is it prevents the shingles from drying evenly. So the shingles under this will always stay wet. Mm -hmm. Don't dry. And if it does dry, it'll dry during the summer, but then it rains here a lot during the summer. So it'll get wet, dry, wet, dry, brittle, damaged. And all of a sudden you walk in the attic and you're like, why does the roof look heavy right there? It's because the tree is sitting on it, it's deposit all of the leaves that's blown off, the leaves can't blow, drain off, gets heavy, problems. Mm. Okay, so anytime you see a tree sitting next to a roof, you should automatically go, we're going to have to get that cut off. By the way, the insurance company won't insure this house mm. until you have the tree cut back from the roof. No, oh, they'll insure the house, they won't insure the roof. They go, we won't show, cut the tree back, we have to have somebody come and look at it, and fix it. Okay, so trees. Trees, I love trees, I don't like trees around houses, mm -hmm. okay. If you see a tree with a mag if you see a house with a magnolia close to it, walk away. Magnolias tear up foundations. Mm -hmm. Magnolias and foundations are like wood, <laughs> are like wood and electricity. What'd you say, young lady? They're full of spiders. spiders. <laughs> All the things in the world. I had one of my first fires. <laughs> Next one, sir. Here, this has got to be some of. Uh, the best worst installed of shingles in my life. The best worst? The best worst. <laughs> okay. Like the best of the worst. You know. <laughs> These people took, now I'll show you all how it's supposed to be. They should come here, go up, come down. This here bucks into the air. And this ridge should have stopped right there at the shingle. Mm. Now I know this because I actually went to Dallas for eight weeks to take a roofing class on how you install roofs. Mm. Okay, so I knew. I said, hey, wait a minute. I looked at the picture and I'm like, what did they do? They made sure. That's Friday, they Saturday. Sure. <laughs> well, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, you're thinking about drinking. Friday, you're drinking. <laughs> okay. Saturday, you're yeah, recovering while still thinking about drinking. <laughs> so that's what happened here. So you watch. See, they terminated it right here. I mean, it's broken there. It needs to be replaced. So how they terminate? They should have been terminated here also came over stop right there mm. and then buck. So what happened is wind is gonna get up under here, here, it's mm. gonna blow it all off because no matter how many nails you put in it, it'll never be secure. Mm. Wow. It can't be secure because the decking only has a limited amount of space mm. for you to be able to fasten anything to. Okay, and this is your weakest point on your roof deck because you have multiple joints. Okay, so if you have multiple areas where you have plywood touching, it says, I'm going to leak right here, <laughs> right here. The joke is, it actually was leaking. That's why I actually sat my drone right there and took that picture, because I went in the attic and I went, how is it leaking? Went and I saw it and I went, oh, okay, now I know. <laughs> Next one, too. Mm. The other roof where they had tied stuff, the, the shingles, you had old shingles and new shingles, mm. right here. He had told the lady that she had he had replaced all of the past events and everything, and they didn't. Hmm. You know? What is this we're looking at? It's a roof. The roof. So you see, you have missing shingles, 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 vent, the flashing on the vent, rusted. And this lady had paid a roof. For the she fence. paid a roof for the fix all of this. Wow. No lie, she actually had the invoice and the receipt. She had everything. She had a full detailed invoice of what he was going to do, and she had the receipt of what she paid. Him. Wow. I actually sent her a roof report on this so that she could take it to the police. Because that was highway robbery. On this one here, I'm like, oh no, man, he can get in the way with this. No, take it. Well, yeah. I need to go to jail. Next one. Oh, next one. Here. So, he was with me on this one. Here. So, this is a brand new water heater. This is your temperature valve, temperature pressure valve, release valve. This is capped. Yeah. Okay. No, it's not supposed to be capped. They came here, they put this on, and this is actually so there's no air that could be released mm. if it ever pops. Ooh, that's, that's what this is for. Down. Just yeah. in case the pressure builds up in the tank too much, this will pop and it will release pressure out of the water tank so it does not what explode. Yeah. Capped. What is it going to do? It's, it's going to explode. Oh, why do you cap it? 
It was leaking. They said they had a licensed plumber do this one. Mm. I was like, all sort of stuff was wrong with this. It wasn't 18 inches off the ground. Please don't. The only place a water heater does not have to be 18 inches off the ground is in the attic. Anywhere else in the home, I don't care where it's at. It could be in a closet system. 18 inches off the ground, it's mandatory. Next one, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, like, that's it? That's it. Perfect. Look, those are just some of the things. I got as I could have found 4,000 other pictures yeah. to show y'all. Yeah. Um, but the biggest issues with homes today, I'm going to tell you all this, electrical and HVAC. Okay? For some strange reason or the other, a lot of electricians have gone to Louisiana since the eight hurricanes that hit them during the summer, and they're still there. Mm -hmm. Roofers and electricians, they are in Louisiana right now. <laughs> And those are the good ones and they'll be paid well, so they're not coming back this way anytime soon. Okay. So when you have people here now doing the work, you have to scrutinize it even more. Young lady, I see you there with your cup. Do you have a question? Unmute <laughs> 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 you muted. Yeah, you muted. Hold on. Unmute yourself. Oh, there we go. Oh. See, I'm new. To, I'm new to all this. Now I'm unmuted. Hi, everyone. I'm just observing right now and just trying to take it all in. Yeah, Stephanie, here's Stephanie, newest, by the way, one of our newest affiliate members. So good Hi, to see Steph. you here, Stephanie. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, one of our affiliate members as well. So our affiliate members is soaking this in. <laughs> but guys, look, I'll tell you all. I'll say this to you. Not only should you trust the process with your inspector, but you need to trust the inspector. Mm -hmm. Okay, period. Hands down, you have to trust the person that you're working with, knowing that they have your client's best interest at heart. Because if they have your client's best interest at heart, they have yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. here is how I'll tell you something that I do that a lot of inspectors don't do, and I try and teach them to do it. In the middle of an inspective inspection, if I'm at a point where I believe a client probably is not going to buy a home, I call the client and you on the phone. I found X, Y, and Z. Would y'all like for me to stop this inspection at this very moment and walk? Because hmm. if you want, send me $185 via Zelle, Cash App, Venmo, something, mm -hmm. and we done. Now, I'm going to send you all that I've done. I'm going to still send it out to you. There you go. So you know why you're stopping this inspection. Instead of you paying all of that money for an inspection that you're not going to, that way you can stop the appraisal. Hey, I'm not buying this house. Tell me a praise don't go to it. Okay, I try to be as fair and honest as possible because at the end of the day, I want all my clients to always be my clients. Mm -hmm. I don't never want to lose a client ever. I want them to always be able to go back and say, Donovan, I want to use you. Okay? I mean, now they're going to have to use Christopher. But Christopher can make it look here. Chris, Christopher is detailed, man. Like sometimes he writes something. I'd be like, do the service. Okay, go on, man. <laughs> Very thorough. Yeah, but, but, that, but that's what you want. You want somebody who's going to... Look, I did an inspection this morning before I got here. The third inspection for the same client. Mm. The second inspection, we were an hour into it. He'll tell you. I looked her in the face. I said, Mel, if you want to, we can walk away from this house. You pay me $185. No, just do the inspection. But I sent in a report. I put a note in the report. I know you're not going to buy this house. <laughs> The entire roof needs to be replaced. House has a lot, a lot of issues. Don't stay on the market because the listing agents are idiots. <laughs> not being funny and not being disrespectful to listing agents, but she was. She called me about my report. I think it was personal. I don't know you. She said that your report was personal. I go. I don't know you. I don't know who. I don't oh, know that's what house. she said. Yeah. No. She said it was personal. This report is personal. <laughs> what? <laughs> and look, as inspectors, y'all do not have a clue what people. Do. I got written up. I had a realtor write, wrote me up the track. She said that, how did she put it? I was stupid, I was dumb, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and she wished I'd never come to her house. What? But she put track out with her on professionalism. Track, track had, well, of course, track had to send me yeah, you got to the complaint. It, and yeah. I said, fantastic, mm -hmm. let's address it. So you I grabbed the know. company and I wrote everything. And the lady from Chicago, she said, what you're saying can't be true. I said, do you not believe me? She said, no. I said, great. I said, on this one, I did something different. She said, what? I said, I recorded it. 
and I sent her a recording of this woman telling me she wished I'd never come to her country. She mm. believe I'm here, da 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 da, and she's gonna find out if I'm illegal and da 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 da. So she was personal. Oh. <laughs> she was crazy. Wow. No, she was special. <laughs> she was special. Spe- we'll call her special. That's a way to right, special. We'll call him special. No, no. Yes. And, and even in that, I tell people, look, at the end of the day, you are who you are. I can care less what you are. I keep it moving. There's one thing I don't do is mix emotions and money. They don't go. No, that is a bad idea. They don't go. I don't need to like you. I just need to like that presidents and love what I do. <laughs> so you like they go together. Presidents. Dead presidents and me loving what dead I do. Dead presidents, man. I okay. love it. So come on. Somebody must have a question for me. Trouble make over here on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm a trouble. How does everyone know? You see it. You see it. Sense it. Just sense it in the room, man. All right. Okay. So how does your inspection reports usually take you to do? You got the same day. Same day. So I'm going to say same day by 8 p.m. They're in your inbox. Done. Like like I said, about 90% of the report is done on the tablet um, before I even leave the property. Mm. I I show the clients if they decide to show up for the last 30 minutes. I show it to you. Here we go. Let me explain how this works. Because at the left, a lot of clients believe that your job is to go there and tell them that it's okay to buy a home and not to buy a home. Or I tell them my first job is to educate you about your home. Whether you buy it or not, I need to educate you. The second part is the deficiencies, okay? Homes are built of components. Components fail. They fail because people do not maintain them, okay? So it's my job. A lot of times, you, if you guys just use me, Y'all find in my reports, we all go like, maintenance needs to be done, roof maintenance. HVAC maintenance needs to be done. This needs to be done, why? Because the person has not done it. Now when an HVAC tech come in, they might be able to say, hey, now we've got to do this, now we've got to do that. Does anybody know what a dryer filter is? Mm -hmm. A filter dryer? You know what it is? Mm -hmm. This morning, the house I did. Mm -hmm. What they did was they painted this one black. (laughs) So what it is, it's- They painted the dryer filter? No, back? yeah. They painted it back. Wow. So what it is, it's, it's a smaller tube that's on the, it's on the high pressure line of the AC unit. The nine times of the ten is on the exterior side. If it rusts, it needs to be replaced. So if it needs to be replaced, you're looking at somewhere between $750 to $1,000. Because mm. when they cut it, they tell you right there, you're up to $500. Is it called how much Freon leaked out? They've got to replace the Freon. And none of this is replaced when they cut it after the leak when they try to put the new one on. Mm-hmm. So you lose freedom. So you go up to 750. Though. Well, this is why they painted this one. Like they didn't little paint. Like they put a thick coat of black paint on this thing. And I looked at it and I snapped the picture. I went, it needs to be reversed. We ain't having this conversation. You didn't fool me, huh? They were trying to hide the rust? Yeah. And well, we know it's rusty. Look, people ask me, now you got an infrared camera? Yeah, I do. The worst investment I ever made. The worst investment. After I went to well, after I went to school and took the course, the guy who taught me, he called me three weeks later and he said, Donovan, he said, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. He said, Don't use that camera. He said, That camera's gonna get you sued. I said, I'm gonna use it. I said, I use it if a client called me and told me. I go, okay, cool. Your eyes tell you everything. Pink does not adhere to anything that moisture is on. So if there is water damage, paint will peel. Mm-hmm. It just does it automatic. Like you don't even need. To. Sometimes you walk in room, you'd be like, "What's that little spot?" Well, um, all of my I use Samsung products. Now um, all of my tablets and stuff because they have the best HD cameras. And you, I'll take a picture, and it will light yeah, up. Yeah. It will. You'd be like, "Damn, that spot didn't look that bad." But they tried to paint over it and it shows everything. Mm-hmm. But your eyes already caught it because you've been in the industry for so long. You know, people walking out, I didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. It's not your job to. Right. That's my job. It's your job to fall in love with the home. My job is to come and tell you, I don't even like my own home. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, the truth. Yeah. Every six months, I do an inspection on my house, clockwork. Mm, I do. <laughs> I, no, seriously, like, if I sold my house today, I could tell any inspector, you could walk in there. Actually, you don't walk in with anything. I, up to date, let's go. I have service reports on everything, okay? Oh, by the way, something that I'm doing, I am in the middle of creating an app. Ooh. The app is going to be called My Home Healthcare. 
healthcare for your house, okay? Where people can plug in all the information from their home, water heater, AC, all the different components, and the app will tell you every year when you need to maintain oh, it sweet. and everything else. So it's something that instead of you buying real, your clients gifts for like $100, $150 stuff, you can be like, hey, I'm gonna buy you a two year subscription for $50, use the app. You know, make sure the inspector have all this information and they have plug it into the app and there you go. Okay. Sweet. Because yeah. at the end of the day, people really don't know you're supposed to change your filter every three months. Right. Every, I don't even think every about six it. months. How many people have ever flushed their water heater? <laughs> How do you know you're supposed to flush your water heater every year? I don't even know what it is. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not water heater right now. If I go and look at your water heater, don't come very nice. Don't come. 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 In your area, then you do it every year. Plumber comes in, they shut the water off, they drain it, they see what's coming out of it, they flush more water in it, they keep draining it until it's clear. Because if it, if you don't do it, brand new water heater lasts you five years. How much it is to install a brand new water heater in your attic? Eighteen hundred dollars. If you don't, garage, you're if you don't flush. Oh yeah. So if you do flush, it should last how long? Oh, it could last you 25, 30 25, years. Twenty-five, thirty years. Just like AC units. If you service your AC unit, village plumbing and air. Remember, village plumbing and air, call them up. They got a deal. They come to you twice a year, clockwork. They not only service your service your AC unit, they actually do a servicing on your plumbing for the same price. You have a plumber and an HVAC tech that will come to your house, service your stuff, and email you the report. Or you know what you do with those reports? You keep them, stick them to the side. Because when it's time for you to sell your home, you have to pull those reports up and go, nah, nah, look what I did. Because now somebody will buy your home quicker than they buy the home down the street because they go, you did maintenance. Every three years, your roof should be maintained. I tell people, spend the $350 to have roof maintenance done. If you don't, $3,500 on the roof leak, which one you want. And your roof leak is always going to be cheaper than your deductible. So your insurance company isn't even going to touch it. I know some, all of us are gonna make real, real good money, but don't we want to keep it? Yeah. So why not do these things? All of these things, and then you get to keep those reports. Renai, I have a Renai at home. It needs to be serviced. It needs to be flushed. Every year. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing, you could actually do it on the Renai. You could actually do it. If you actually go on YouTube, Renai actually has um, a YouTube page where they'll teach you how to flush it, but you've got to buy a bilge phone. And if you don't want to, you could call a plumber. I think it's about $150. That's nothing. Hey, I don't spend people money. I'll just say it's $150. I'll do it today. Right? Oh my gosh. No, seriously. Um, they'll, they'll come out and they'll just flush it for you. Yeah. Can I get village plumbing in to do it? Yes. Cool. All right. I'm, I'm calling them today. All right. So, so HVAC, you need to, HVAC water here, you need to main, like do service calls on those. Twice a month. I mean, twice a year. No, yeah, your water heater once yeah, a year. Once a year. Okay, if, if you're in an area where there's good water, mm -hmm. or you have a water softener system, two years. Um, on your AC unit, please every six months. Every six oh. months. All right. Like clockwork. Look, and I don't never tell people to do things that I don't do. Okay, I have a pass control guy that comes to my house every four months, uh -huh. and he sprays my house. Yeah. Okay. Why? Because I, my wife hate bugs, my son hate bugs, I don't mind bugs, we live in the country. But in the same breath, I go, <laughs> I don't want these things around my house. So he comes and he sprays. He checks. I know I don't have any term rights, but he checks. He gives me a receipt. I pay him. I don't want no discounts. I tell all of them, don't give me no discounts. Because when you call me to do your inspection, my insurance tells me I ain't giving you nothing. <laughs> now, if you have clients and you send me clients, I can give you a number on a discount right now and it won't work right for your client. I'll, I'll show you why. Let's say your client calls and say, hey, look down when I got X, Y, and Z house, blah, blah, blah. I go, okay, I'm gonna give you a $50 discount. The client could call me up the street and say, hey, Donovan, I got a home with a aerobic system. Well, da, 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 here and being. I look at that client and I'm gonna give you a $150 discount. 
because there's so many different components that I could afford to take some from here, some from here, some from here, and give it to you. Whereas if you just have a freestanding home, you could end up with a fifty dollar discount. So I would say, if you say, that's tell them mention you guys. Like I promise you, they'll walk away happy. Okay, my goal is to always make sure my clients are happy, guys. Mm -hmm. My first client, no lie, still calls me today. Oh. All right, she calls me at least once every three months. Mr. Harvey, is it time for me to change my filter? <laughs> yes, ma'am. No, seriously, I actually have a filter. For to change a filter, it's locked in my phone. You know who pays for her filters? Oh, you pay for a filter? I buy her filters, Amazon. She actually oh. gets three filters come to go to her house every year. Clockwork. Mm -hmm. Wow. Love that old woman. <laughs> she, she cracks me up. She's the only person. Yeah. So, all right. So, HVAC, pest control, roof, water heater, air filters. What else we need to be changing? That's where we maintain our house. The but caulking around the, the, cal the caulking <laughs> around your windows. Ah, um, yes. The caulking around the exterior, interior of your windows should be done every three years. If it hasn't been done, yeah, you want to start writing this down. <laughs> and here's why. Okay, <laughs> the caulking. On your window, it does it does several things. It helps to prevent warm and cool air from getting in, while helping prevent air from in the home getting out. Okay. If it isn't right, you find your AC is still coming on three, four times a day. It's coming on eight to ten times a day. You're spending money, and then you look in the bottom corners of your windows. You see those soft little wet spots. That's because now you have moisture intrusion, because the warm air on the outside is heavier than the cool air on the inside. So the warm air gets and tells the cool air, I'm gonna keep you in here. When the warm air and the cool air meets, moisture. So now somebody has to come and cut that piece of the sheetrock, pull out the window wall, put a new piece in, sand it, paint it, retexture it, paint it. Something that I just had mine done last year, October. I won't lie to you, this dude, I refer this dude to everybody at my home. <laughs> Hired this dude to just do the caulking around my windows. He caulked around my garage door. He caulked around all my light fixtures. Everywhere that needed to be caulked, this man did it. Caulked. I was so impressed with him, I paid him double what he charged me. <laughs> wow. He sent me pictures. He was like, hey, I'm done. Da, 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 da. I went, no. I went back. When I went home, he was gone. I looked at him. I sold him another payment. I said, dude, seriously? Anybody that calls me and says, I need somebody, there you go. Mm -hmm. Call me. Right. All right. So that's every three years. And you said the, uh... no, I'm serious, man. So the roof every three years? Every two to three years. Well, so have it done now and then go every three years. Because what happens is when the builder builds your home, they use the cheapest material. So the caulking that they use is cheap. Okay. So you need to have it done and then start going on a three year basis after you have it, had it done. Okay. It will save you a lot of money, I'm telling you, because you would be surprised to know the things that you're not told that you should have been told when you bought them. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, how to maintain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maintenance is a big thing, like, because yeah. especially, like, you know, as builders say, this is a new one, we had it inspected, the city had it inspected, mm -hmm. have your warranty yeah. inspection done, and then the warranty inspection comes around and they go, that doesn't fall under the warranty. That doesn't fall under the warranty. Mm -hmm. That doesn't. And then I have to call them up and go, but you told my client everything that they found. Y'all yeah. will fix it. So here's what we expect for you to go and fix it. Who are you? None of your business. <laughs> I'm telling you, my client, I'm the inspector. Mm -hmm. Go fix it. Because you lied to them. You told them to not. They didn't, thinking they were saving money. Little do they know, the little three, four hundred dollars they thought they were saving, it's not worth the headache that they're going through right now. And here comes the headache, you know? And then they ask me, they go, you can't give me a discount. I go, you don't know what I'm about to go through with your builder. <laughs> you should pay me extra for what I'm about to have to go through right now. And that's good to have a backup, you know, because we can write up the report, ask for the repairs, but then I, we can also say, hey, call the inspector yourself so he can explain it the way it needs to be explained so you can understand it. So. Where's your cup? Oh, she's still not. She's still right there. Yeah, right where's your cup? Oh, man. Let's make it sure. She got a cup, a small thing. She's she chilling at the house. Yeah. <laughs> but look, seriously. Yeah. And here, if you guys 
I'm sure you guys are going to do listings and everything else. If an inspector sends out a report and you're trying to wrap your head around it, my card is here, my information is on it, call me and tell me you emailed me and I emailed your report. Look at it for me and let me know. I will gladly in the evening sit down and go over it. Wow. Because here's the thing. Every inspector kind of says the same thing. We just say it a little different. Mm -hmm. My report, I get sometimes a little long-winded because I like to explain things to people like, hey, I tell them, I said, what's wrong? Where is it? And why is it wrong? Mm -hmm. Those are your three W's you have to follow, okay? And once you follow it, you're good. And once I, I answer all three of those questions in my report. And that way, you should never have to call me and say, I don't understand what you just know. It's mm, good stuff. I'm not going to write and use big old terminologies and that's stupid. Like you write report in layman terms for everybody to be able to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this is a come to Jesus moment. We're having a come by the house moment. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Stevie, Kenyell, Terry, do any of you all have questions for Donovan? No, not at this moment. Actually, I disconnected for a minute and I just got this back on, but I'm quite sure I will. How do you, um, how do you determine your fees? Homes are based on square footage, sometimes age and components. So just so you know, um, we do pool inspections, do septic inspections, also do well inspections. Um, a lot, not all lenders, but most lenders will tell you when you have a well inspected, you need to have a microbacteria coliform yeah. test done. Okay. I don't charge extra for that. I, whatever, I have a company here in Houston. I've never been to them. He goes to them. <laughs> he drops off the water, but um, I just change companies. That's why I can say that. Uh, they charge 350 for it, and they have anywhere from a three to seven day turnaround. Okay. And so I send it out, they email it back to everyone and we're done, okay? So that's how that works. That fee is not changeable because they have my credit card on file. <laughs> and when they charge me, I need the money to go pay it back. Okay, a pool inspection costs $125. A typical pool company charges around 250. I think it's pure robbery. Um, home inspectors, like I said, your home's gotta be built in the 650s, 60s, 70s. For the price to go up on a standard home. Okay, I'm gonna lie to you, my prices are already cheaper than the average. I know dudes who charge you 12, like 400 square foot, out, sorry, 1200 square foot, I was going like 450, and I'm like, Jesus, take the wheel. That's what I'm, char <laughs> that's what I'm charging for a 3000 square foot house. Like, what do you people? Oh, wow. I don't know those people. And then I'm like, Donovan, charge them up front. No, please charge these people. I think they janky. Just charge them up front. Said, no, they be janky all you want. Listen, you gotta live with that, <laughs> not man, not me. Charge, you that, man. <laughs> yes, I charge them. <laughs> Wow. You know, that's good. Stuff, man. Not me. But look, I have a quick question. Okay, you has a question. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, even if the water heater has a self-cleaning mode, do you still recommend cleaning it every two years after it's new? Yes. Or flushing, excuse me. Yes. Let me ask you something. Your microwave, your oven has a self-cleaning mode. Do you still clean it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't use that mode. I clean it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they have self-cleaning modes just in case there's a novice and you want to clean it because they want it's more of a troubleshooting method that they have on there than it is a standard thing like hey it isn't working can you put it on self-cleaning let's see what it's going to do oh it was cleaning it it wouldn't have to go on self-cleaning kind of thing <laughs> you know say cool I mean, we appreciate it brother all right so one more thing if you guys do have a client though and they need a discount Call me and let me know before they call me. <laughs> hey, I have a client, seriously, they're not going to be able to. Can you? And I'd be like, all right, cool. Because when they call me, oh, I'm about to make them happy because of you. I'm going to tell them, hey, I spoke to your realtor. I'm giving you a discount because of your realtor. Mm. Not because of you, because I don't know you. Mm -hmm. I'm give it to you because I know your realtor. Mm. And then they look at you a little different, like, wow, man, you saved me some money. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I'm here and you're done this weekend. <laughs> well, you got your cards, man. We're going to put them in the front uh, in the little business card hole. No, thank you very much. Give your recommendation. Uh, if you guys have any questions, no, seriously, like when I say any, I mean any. I don't care. Call me. 
Is yeah. it just the two of you for now? Yeah. yeah. Do you so, guys handle like your volume? Like what? My volume? Oh, I Because I know you said you have a lot of people and they have a lot of volume. Yeah, but no. Thank I could take you guys on right now and not skip a beat. Like, honest to God, I wish I could do three inspections a day, seven days a week, and put him on two a day, five, six days a week, or as much as he wants to work. Nice. You know, like I said, last year I did 654. My goal this year is 700 just for me. Mm -hmm. Just for me. How do you take on, um, you know, training? They just call Funny you? The funny thing is that his parents are actually realtors. Okay. Okay. Yes, so, I, I have a soon to be 18 year old. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> make sure he, listen make sure he goes to school make sure he goes to champion school real estate. make sure it's something he wants to do mm -hmm. it, is. It, it already is it is so yeah so let him go to school if he goes to school let me know i'll reach out to all of the people at champion school of real estate i know them all okay um i will be i was supposed to be one day riding along the structures last year COVID happened didn't happen um it's gonna happen this year uh, so I'm probably riding him along, you know, and look, my ultimate goal is to make sure we have good people out there. Mm -hmm. And once he gets to it, bring him on, address him like him, and we go to work. <laughs> you know, more than likely Chris would be the trainer at that point. He'll be training. Um, new inspectors come next year. Because I won't lie to you, it's probably going to be up until next year before your son even becomes an inspector. Mm -hmm. It's crazy out there right now. And um, just, I don't, I don't know if you know this or not, but each state has uh, different inspection laws, or like he would have to go to school in different states if he wanted to. Be well, no, so here's the thing. So I'm licensed here in Louisiana. So I did the, the Louisiana test because Louisiana tests or standards are based off of taxes. And they need to find out how easy it was. So they paid me to go up there and take it for them. It's real easy. Um, here in Houston, yeah, it's 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 a long process. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay. I had to become a home inspector in this. If you could become a home inspector in Houston, you could become a home inspector anywhere in the United States. Yeah, okay. Because once you become trained here, you're trained to I can go to Chicago right now and inspect the house and not skip a beat. Oh wow. Because that's how they train us. You're gonna learn everything. And then you're gonna base it on Houston. Wow. Well, Texas, but you're in Houston, so. Any other no, questions? Tell him, tell him no. If you tell him, give me a comment. I'd love to talk to him. Like, I'm, I'm all about the industry growing with the right people. We've got a bunch of old folks leaving the industry now. So it's yeah, kind of like us. It needs some new blood. Yeah, realtors. We've got a lot of old, old, you got a lot of old realtors leaving the industry. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about our industry. Oh, the industry. See, that's why, that's why we don't never let you come to nothing. I'm coming here. Why you at like that? I'm coming anyway. All right, so tell me to eat the food, Donovan, huh? Please. I'm going to tell you what y'all want to do with it, man. You say whatever it is ain't going back to your car. No. You want something to eat? Can you prep something to eat? Sweet. Can you check it out, Donovan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Busy because this worked when I pulled it. I didn't help her. Showing the plate. <laughs> that was all. I, I said, that's a, that wasn't nice. But I got a new caterer. So, young lady, how long have you been in the industry? Um, almost a year. Almost a year? Oh, you are new. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Hey, look, man. Everybody has to start all that there, okay? Don't, 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 don't yeah. let that fool you. Everybody has to go through their first year. Yeah. Donovan, you're going to here for two oh. minutes. She got a client just put in an hour, so we're going to need to What? And we're going to already put that in the video. Yeah, ladies, we're officially done. Um, Y'all don't have any other questions? Y'all have any questions? You good? Can you have good? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right, All right. Terry, you good? I'm good. All right, well, we'll see. We, uh, let's see. We're doing study hall tomorrow, so if y'all available, and we're gonna we're gonna do a virtual component, so uh, we'll be sending that information out, so you guys can take uh, take part in that on tomorrow. All right. Excellent. Thank All right. you. All right, ladies. Talk to y'all later. Man, uh, this is amazing. Man, we had a great year last year.